Blackbeard, Edward Teach. During the height of the Golden Age of Piracy, early 18th century, across the seas of Caribbean and West Indies, the sight of the black flag adorned with the poorly drawn skeleton spearing a red heart was a sight that all merchantmen and their crew members feared. Blackbeard was the captain of the Queen Anne's Revenge. This 200-ton frigate was meant to be a British merchant ship under the name Concord, However, only a year after being built, it was snagged by the French and used as a slave ship, who changed the name to La Concorde de Nantes. The soon-to-be Queen Anne's Revenge made two successful trips under French control before getting taken. 100 miles into its third trip, the French Navy encountered Blackbeard and his crew aboard two sloops, ships that normally carried only 75 men and 14 guns, but not Blackbeard's. Here are the battle stats. The French-owned frigate had 200 men, 36 of which were seriously ill from scurvy and dysentery. The battle brought about 16 fatalities caused by two consecutive volleys, which is when the ship's captain, Captain Dossett, surrendered the ship. So what, a few sailors were sick. Well, let's talk about what they were sick with. Scurvy and dysentery. Scurvy left untreated can lead to bleeding gums, loosened teeth, and bleeding under your skin. If it is left untreated, you will most likely die from brain or heart hemorrhage. On top of that is dysentery, which can cause diarrhea, fever, nausea, vomiting, among other things that will severely dehydrate you and contribute to further scurvy. But what about doctors, though? Doctors could help, right? Yeah, if the ship owners and captains weren't such cheap asses who thought it was a waste of money to have a doctor on the ship who can't even pull their own weight when moving the ship forward. Enough about that, back to the Queen Anne's Revenge. After the surrender, the cabin boy and three of his fellow French crewmen voluntarily joined the pirates, and ten others were taken by force, including the pilot, three surgeons, two carpenters, two sailors, and the cook. This is when essentially Blackbeard decided to keep the big ship and leave the French on the smaller ships. The cabin boy also told Blackbeard of the gold the French carried, which they stole. Was he a snitch? Maybe, maybe not, but whatever he did saved his own life. By April 1718, the pirates were off the Terneff Islands in the Bay of Honduras. It was there that Blackbeard had captured the sloop adventure, forcing the sloop's captain, David Harriet, to join him. Sailing east once again, the pirates passed near the Cayman Islands and captured a Spanish sloop off Cuba that they also added to their flotilla. This is when he decided to jump ship, literally, to the sloop, the adventure, this had a greatly reduced crew. Lieutenant Maynard had about 60 men from the Royal Navy aboard his own vessels, which was about to meet Blackbeard head to head. Raising the Union Jack aboard their sloops, the British sailors maneuvered to engage Blackbeard's vessel. Familiar with the waters, Blackbeard lured the Royal sloops onto a sandbar where they temporarily ran aground. The pirate ship then unleashed a devastating broadside with eight cannons that tore into both of Maynard's vessels. In an effort to get off the sandbar, the crew aboard Maynard's vessel jettisoned the ship's ballast, meaning they threw all the heavy stuff out of the ship so they could get moving. By then, Blackbeard's ship had also ran aground. As Maynard steered toward Blackbeard's sloop, he ordered his men below decks in hope of luring pirates aboard the royal sloop. Which makes you think, no, Blackbeard's crew can't be that dumb. Problem is, they were. They threw their grappling hooks and improvised grenades onto Maynard's sloop. Maynard's men then swarmed up from below decks and a bloody hand-to-hand -hand struggle ensued. Lieutenant Maynard came face to face with his famous prey, Blackbeard. Amidst this crazy battle, Maynard then shot Blackbeard and then his crew finished the job. Kind of like when you're in a fight and then all your friends jump in. When you were doing perfectly fine without them. The surviving pirates, who were all wounded, either surrendered or jumped overboard. Casualties on both sides were pretty significant, even though they were both in small numbers. Maynard himself was slightly wounded, and when they boarded the pirate sloop, they found a bunch of important papers. 
including a letter to Blackbeard from Tobias Knight, the secretary of the colony of North Carolina. Blackbeard's head had been severed and his body dumped overboard. The king's men sailed to Bath to repair the vessels, heal their wounds, and make contact with the British land force. Maynard then sailed the pirate sloop adventure back to Virginia in late December. Creepily enough, when Maynard dropped anchor on the James River in January 1719, Blackbeard's severed head was hanging from the bowsprit of the sloop he once commanded, like some sort of sick trophy. Fifteen members of Blackbeard's former crew were eventually tried and executed in Williamsburg, Virginia on the charge of piracy. Which doesn't seem super fair, because pirates give you a chance to serve their crew or die. But they can't have the same option? But that concludes the short story of Blackbeard. Like and subscribe. Thank you.